Good morning, everyone. So I'm Olivier. I'm a distinguished technologist working at DXC, and I have a question for you. Uh, when was the last time that you got bored? I mean, bored like really bored, right? Two minutes ago, right? Or bored like get me out of here bored. I think, and I'm willing to bet, that the last time that you got bored was in a setup like this, uh, sitting in a room, uh, sitting in a very comfortable seat, and uh, waiting for the trainer to come in the room and, and just waiting for the training to start. And you're right, Olivier. I get bored sitting in a classroom or watching videos for trainings. I'm talking about those trainings with 200 PowerPoint slides. True story, all with 30 bullet points each, that the teacher reads one by one. He reads every one of them. I know. But I have been doing training like this for decades, he says. Yeah, this is Dan, our developer. So, and, and Dan, I agree. I mean, training can be really boring. Uh, training about uh, uh, structures and Java language and training about algorithmics and uh, training about um, yeah, variables and pointers and everything else, Kubernetes and the like, right? So I know, you know, sometimes you also have videos uh, and videos are cool. And the good thing about videos is that you can fast forward them and uh, maybe you can post them. I know. You listen to someone. You hope not to fall asleep, and it ends with a test or an assessment. Right. As if assessing what I learned on continuous integration through a multiple choice quiz even made sense. <laughs> I know. I know I was bored as well. Um, and, and, you know, when I'm talking to my colleagues, everyone is getting really fed up with those trainings. I mean, they really, really suck. So, but I'm interesting. Uh, how do you learn? Dan, uh, how do you learn about continuous integration, version control, unit testing, test-driven development? I know my style of learning, hmm. as a developer, is not a classroom. No. It's not a video or a webinar even. I would look at videos, try things, browse Stack Overflow, exactly. try more things, read blogs, try again. This is the thing. I learn by doing. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. We learn by doing. I do learn by doing. Um, and let's do this then. I think I have an idea. Let's disrupt training uh, and uh, do training by using techniques that we do for a living. Let's do training and reinvent training by doing training as code and learning as code with DevOps. Yeah. Recursivity. Yeah. Tell me more. <laughs> yeah, recursivity, right? So let's do training with DevOps training with uh, DevOps. So we, some times back, um, we invented a, a concept and we implemented something that is called the DevOps Dojo. In fact, the DevOps Dojo, is, we did not invent it. It was a very nice team at Target in the US, a big retail store. And um, the Dojo is something that we have also in place in, the, in Belgium here. So uh, DXC Technology, big company, 140,000 service delivery employees. And in Belgium, we have a big presence as well with 1,200 people uh, working out of Belgium. Uh, we work in our digital transformation centers in Michelin. I think this is how it's pronounced. And uh, we do cool things and, and, and uh, you know, um, analytics for self-driving cars for BMW, for example, and many other things, drones and, and those very interesting things. And we have lots of communities as well, 16 of those, uh, where we learn about um, open source, when we learned about Kubernetes, the cloud, cloud native development, and things like that. So let's step back and about the topic about learning and training. And how do we learn, uh, we as developers, as engineer managers, as IT professionals? The first thing that is really, really important is that I believe that we learn more by doing than by sitting in a room and listening to a teacher, right? Apprenticeship is much better than schooling. Actually, this is probably why today we have lots of issues with our school systems. So this is, I think, a very important principle. The second important principle is that you have to define a clear path to success. So for example, here in martial art, this is judo, right? And uh, you know exactly that if you go from 
white to black, there is a progression, and that progression is something that you can follow and, you, and that you can track. So a clear path to success, I think it's important. We have that in all of the certification programs, uh, whether this is AWS certified, Azure, Google Cloud, or any kind of other certifications, right? But also, I think as a human and as an individual, I learn always by relating to what I already know. So if you teach me something, if I look at a video or a blog post, I'm going to try to relate it with what I already know and what I'm aware about. So this is really important because we have to take the people in our journey, in our learning journey, by trying to understand where they are and take them from where they are to where we want them to, to be. And to do that, there is nothing more powerful than a story. As a kid, I loved stories. Um, as an adult, I'm playing Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> uh, and, and stories are all about, you know, I, I get fascinated by those. So it's not about stories about dungeons and dragons and things like that, but it's stories about DevOps, stories about teams uh, that have Scrum Masters, Product Owners, Security Engineers, Developers, Testers, etc., and assembling a story around that. So stories are really powerful. So back to this DevOps Dojo before I show you code and how we do learning as code. Uh, the DevOps Dojo, if you think about it, it's uh, so the Dojo is in martial arts, literally, is the, uh, the place of the ways. So it's a hall or a space, taking from Wikipedia, of immersive learning or meditation. So we don't meditate too much when we do DevOps, but um, immersive learning, I think, is the very key important piece there. Right? So this is the place of the way. So it's not a school, it's not a university, but it's a place where you practice your craft. And just a picture of my son practicing in his dojo. So we have been doing that for a long time uh, in, in our company. Again, 140,000 people uh, to train and to skill. This is something that we have been doing with a lot of support from our people. But what we came up with is this recipe that you may be able to reuse, uh, is uh, splitting our learnings with four big categories. The what, okay, what is it about? The how you are going to implement it, and I'm going to give you more details on the how. The why, why do you even want to get there? And also to really make a difference with our customers and, and for our um, internal projects, in practice, how do you implement that, right? So actually doing the work for real. And we do all of that with internal DevOps days, hackathons, where we do, there is a lot of sharing happening, as I was saying before, uh, with the, our communities. So the what is really the intent is to give you like, like a tiny bit of test, right? This is really for everyone, is to understand what DevOps is, how it's different, how to do, do your first Git pull request, wow. How to do your first uh, Jenkins continuous integration pipeline, how to maybe run your first Ansible playbook, that's like really the first basics, and also like more high level for managers. The how, the yellow belt, is about all of the techniques around how to do things, right? How to do version control, how to do continuous integration, how to do test-driven development, why it matters and why it's important, trunk-based development, small batches, shifting security left, blue-green deploys. I mean, all of those this, things, things you have heard during the, uh, the, the earlier talks uh, this week. The green belt is more for managers and executives, right? So that they can actually sponsor the change and understand why it matters for them and why they need to sponsor. Lastly, the black belt is about coaching. It's about actually teams coming in with their real issues. So now it's, we are really talking about a physical location. And we do design thinking, we do, uh, you know, working on prototypes and eventually uh, the team goes back with first the beginning of a working solution. But that's only the beginning of the journey so that we can start improving over time and doing what we call DevOps guys and continuous improvement. So, you know, with all of those things and uh, helping our customers and, and also our teams, uh, we did a lot of face-to-face -face trainings back in 16. Um, and this was really cool. And we had lots of fun uh, uh, about it. And we do also that uh, quite a bit for our customers. But I think the challenge uh, for that is that 
face to face do not scale. I mean, we had you know serious games and labs and presentations, yes, but it was really you know fun trainings. But still, um, we cannot do that fast enough. So only 120 people got trained this way in 16, which was good, but again, not enough. So our challenge was to say, okay, how do we scale that? And the idea, because we do again DevOps, I can for a living, is how can we maybe reinvent training and do skilling as code, right? And I think the first example that you saw with Dan, the developer talking, I'll show you the technology behind, what's behind the curtain, uh, but that's one of the examples of the things that we do for, for trainings as code. So we moved to a virtual type of setup, right? So, um, and I'll show you a demo of that and how this works. Uh, but the intent of this virtual environment is to be able to, first, there is a story uh, with the characters that I, I was talking about. And then uh, we have an application, a pipeline, I will show you that. But we have a collection of modules that cover both the cultural changes, um, like thinking everything as code, uh, doing uh, you know, the, the, the test-driven development and, and, uh, and all of those things, but also the technical stuff. How do you do version control right? How do you do continuous integration right? because you can have a Jenkins server on the side, it runs Jenkins jobs like nightly, but then, you know, it just, nobody's looking at the, the results because everything goes to the junk folder and this is not the right way to do it. So how do we do this right? And what we have used is a platform called, uh, what we are using is a platform called Katacoda. You may have touched Katacoda if you followed some of the Kubernetes training uh, from Google, they are all hosted in Katacoda. I will show you how this works as well. So a collection of modules that are virtual. And the cool thing about that is that you don't need to come with anything. You don't need to install anything on your PC. You just need Chrome or Firefox, and you have a full working environment just for you. Let's talk about the team. So this is uh, about the story, right? So we had to come up with um, people so that the people can relate uh, to what they already know. So we came up with characters that you see there. We have Charlie, our CEO. We have Chen, she's a DevOps coach. Brenda from the business. Dan, the developer. Tina, the tester. So you see that all of their names start with kind of their role so that we can always remember what they do and what their role is. And we have a funny uh, character who is uh, Hal. Hal is a hacker and he's kind of uh, breaking things as the team is moving forward. We have the story, we have the characters, we have an application. So I know a lot of you do Java. Uh, so the application is based very simple on the pet clinic. So the team is actually writing applications for pet clinics. And uh, again, very simple application, but I think uh, something that is enough just to get started with continuous integration, version control, and those principles. Obviously, there is a pipeline that goes with that. So this uh, pipeline is all you know, Jenkins-based for this example. Uh, and the intent is to show not only that you can have code, uh, but you have to accompany that with a pipeline that does automated tasks, continuous integration, automated tests, running your JUnit tests, uh, doing your um, analytics and security scanning, and eventually deploy uh, when you have another side of the pipeline. So enough uh, slides, I think it's time for a, for a little demo. So uh, in this demo, I'm going to show both technical modules and cultural modules. So let's talk about the technical modules. Um, so this is the environment, right? So just in my browser, and I have an ephemeral environment that is going to be just for me for an hour or so. So on the left side, I have instructions. And here, this is the story and the characters that we introduced. This is the welcome module, so it's kind of the introduction. In this other example, we have the version control module. So on the left side, again, instructions. And now we were doing version control in the past. And on the right side, a text editor. Uh, actually, it's the full environment. It's Docker container. I'll show you the, what's behind that. That is uh, there just for you. You have your own GitHub environment your own GitHub repo, and uh, you are uh, getting user stories for that. So you can follow the scripts that is on the left, and we encourage you to do so, but you also can get out of the script. 
which is really cool because now the developers or whoever, the managers, can understand how to do the things and navigate around and get out of the script. Uh, interesting also, we have introduced a GitHub app, which is a bot, and this bot emulates the personas that we interact with. Uh, so we get uh, questions uh, for the tester, we ask the product owner to approve the pull request again so that we learn by doing. All of this is integrated between uh, GitHub and this ephemeral Jenkins that we have in the environment. Again, everything is running under a browser. Uh, and this, uh, ev again, ephemeral Jenkins is, is real, right? So you can modify the job, uh, you can run the tests, we run them again. So this is all about the technical modules. We also have cultural modules, and those cultural modules are, cover a number of topics, such as um, value stream mapping, uh, how to map your processes and how to improve them, how to continuously improve and run some DevOps uh, um, Kaizen. To do that, we interact with the personas, the characters. Uh, we have some text-based kind of chats. We have also some videos that I kind of previewed at the beginning, uh, which are generated on the fly. We have um, uh, quizzes that are also there just to make sure people you know, understand and we can continue to engage them. And as we are moving forward in the story, what we do is basically evolving our project and we get stories and we, get, we have some continuous improvement, um, uh, improvement themes that we cover. And I think the point here is that it's a virtual environment, but it's a safe practice. And again, nobody has to install anything. It's not a video, but you actually can experiment and do it by yourself. And it's just like five minutes, and if I have time, I'll show you. So what is behind the curtain? And I talked about learning as code, so I think you guys are all developers, so let me show you what's behind. Uh, it's actually not very complex, uh, but um, the, the, the DevOps dojos, the one that we have here in the yellow belt, DevOps dojos, uh, they are uh, made of JSON files for the sequence, right? So you saw on the instructions, there were some steps, uh, and uh, the JSON files provide the steps and how to sequence kind of the, the, the path for the training. All of the instructions are all in Markdown, so everybody can write Markdown. Uh, and this is just a very simple way to code the instructions. We have few Python scripts also to set up the environment, uh, get the Docker, uh, got Docker container started to, to start the Jenkins and to start the other, um, for example, the pet clinic application. And indeed, we have Docker containers for the runtime. So, uh, in the browser, you get all of the terminal and everything, but in the back, it's, it's talking to a, to a platform which is Katakoda, uh, which runs Docker containers, right? So um, all of this is not only the way we do it, but also um, doing that as code. All of the code of the training is on our GitHub, in GitHub repositories. Um, all of the training is version control, but also goes through continuous integration. So when we implement a change, when we want to change a sentence or changing the wording of, a, of an explanation, and we are going to catch spelling mistakes, for example. So anything that we do for the training is going through continuous integration. In the back end, we also have many AWS services. I told you about, uh, about Poly, which is uh, you know, the, the, the talking interface uh, and an API that we use for uh, voice. Uh, we also have uh, some Kubernetes infrastructure, not only for that, but the bots, uh, the GitHub apps are running uh, in Kubernetes, and again, leveraging Katakoda. This is our GitHub repo uh, with, the, um, the, the, with the source of the training. Uh, well, actually, very standard uh, GitHub repository. Um, but I think what is really interesting is this, and uh, the same way as we are used to collaborate as developers on applications and on code, um, we are doing that also for learnings and for trainings. So we have a contributing guideline uh, that is there and that uh, everybody can follow to improve and provide new modules or add bug fixes. In fact, we get a lot of pull requests on, this, uh, on those trainings because it's a, like we are running those trainings like an internal open source project. It's called Inner Source. So we follow the open source principles, but behind our wall. Um, and uh, every time there is a pull request, uh, so obviously, as you can see here, it gets checked. 
uh, and uh, the, the pipeline is running to verify that this pull request is valid. What I really like uh, is that, uh, so those trainings, I mean, we have a lot of people attending those and following the, the learnings, but uh, what I really like is that it's not only the people in the team that are providing feedback and making them better, uh, is that, again, it's a kind of a company type of, uh, of sharing activity, an open source project. And even our CTOs, I mean, the, the people that have, uh, I mean, for example, Chris here, uh, a global CTO of our delivery organization uh, is issuing pull requests, and that's fine. You know, um, everybody can can improve the training and make it better. As I said, the training is also going through continuous integration. So we have uh, spell checks, uh, making sure that all of the uh, the files are spell checked. Uh, what you don't see here is that uh, we have 122 today in our first module. Um, uh, in our first um, belt, we have multiple belts, 122 files that are checked for spelling errors, right? So instead of doing that manually or doing that in a world kind of uh, uh, environment, we, we automatically ch check for spelling uh, in our markdown using spell check checking. We make sure that all of the hyperlinks that point to outside content are always valid because sometimes they break. And we make sure that all of our Python code and JSON and files and YAML files are linting properly. And I wanted to show you at the beginning, uh, the, there was the Dan, the developer, talking, uh, and this is uh, obviously scripted. But I wanted to show you one of the things that, uh, that, that was used for that. Uh, this is an AWS service which is called Poly. And Poly does uh, something, understands the syntax that is called SSML. So it's a simple speech markup language. Yeah, YAML for speech. Um, but uh, the really interesting thing for us is that we can have, uh, we can describe the dialogue and how we talk with code. Right? So uh, I'm just going to run the video again. You are going to hear the developer and we will follow that with the uh, SSML. Just as you can see there, speak, start with speak, and now we have auto breathe. And if you really pay attention, you will hear the uh, character breathing. I need the sound for that. <laughs> Let's try it. Hi, I'm Dan. I am a developer. And you're right, Olivier. I get bored sitting in a classroom or watching videos for trainings. I'm talking about those trainings with 200 PowerPoint slides. True story, all with 30 bullet points each, that the teacher reads one by one. He reads every one of them. But I have been doing training like this for decades, he says thing, right? So we can have the dialogue like this and, and have uh, Dan uh, speak, uh, but also we can have, have him whisper and talk like this. Uh, we can have him, um, you know, have a higher pitch when talking like, but I've been doing trainings like this for decades and have some emotion as part of the thing. So very cool, uh, very cool API that we leverage. <clears throat> okay, training and learning is only fun if you get rewarded. So uh, for that, we have put in place uh, badges and gamification. Um, so I talked about the various belts that we have. Um, and when you follow those trainings, you get rewarded with badges. Uh, some can get even stickers. And I have stickers on my PC for that. Um, but uh, this is all about making fun right? Uh, as you learn. So gamification is something that is really powerful. If you don't use gamification today in your app, or in your learning, if you want to drive, I really encourage it. So if you want to drive behaviors, the intent is to reward with maybe like points in the app, right? Hey, have you checked this feature? No, well, okay, click here, click here. Okay, you get 10 more points. So many times, you know, an application is only covered, we only use 20% of the app, but maybe the 80% of the functionalities that you have created are also very useful, just that the user doesn't know about it. So implementing gamification is a way to make sure that he has a full understanding of the thing and doing fun with that. So same thing for our trainings, we, we implemented gamification so that uh, they can uh, really be uh, um, excited by learning. So we've got badges, we have uh, major badges and minor badges. Uh, the major badges are, you know, yellow belt, first stripe, second stripe, third stripe. I'm becoming a ninja. 
Um, then we have, uh, for the various modules and practices that we preach, how to lead change, how to do version control, continuous integration, test-driven development, etc. All of those are, um, again, rewarded by, by badges. So it's not about, you're not going to be certified and be an awesome person about it, but at least you will have the notion and you will be able to explore and learn more as you go, right? You don't learn continuous integration in an hour. That is for sure. So talking about scale, um, we have been doing this at scale uh, since uh, 16. So we, again, we started with just like face-to-face -face, uh, concept sharing. And then between our yellow belt, white belt, uh, and multiple belt systems, we have been training a lot of people. So I think this is really interesting that we can improve over time. And thanks to software, um, we can scale and we can make things better. So the trainings people actually seems to really like it. Uh, good content, good learning, but also they find that it's fun. Uh, and uh, this should be a way for developers, they really like it because it's something they can collaborate, they can do pull requests against the trainings, they can, do, uh, they can implement new modules. We had someone uh, that worked on adding a new module for the thing. Uh, we have lots of bug fixes also for the training, so I think this is really, really interesting. This is the story that we have. So the world set up, right? So first putting in place a story. And I think if you are into sharing concepts and sharing ideas, storytelling is extremely important. And it's, it's, this is extremely powerful. So if you want to explain your Kubernetes setup, your application, your, if you can relate, you know, we do user stories in Agile and it is for a reason because stories are powerful. So you can put a team together, Fictual's team, or it can be the real people, and invent a story behind that and, and, and vehiculate your, share your concept through that story. Um, we have an application, small application, a pipeline, so the technology stack that goes with that, and a game that we have put together to make it fun and engaging. And all of this is as code. So I think we are trying to disrupt the way we do um, learnings with the way that we do DevOps. And this is something that we know we as developers, right? So uh, learning doesn't have to be boring, doesn't have to be videos uh, or, or classrooms. All of this can be code. Before I go to a real uh, demo and show you the live environments, um, the outcomes really are better learnings. Um, people assimilate more the concepts, more customer value, because as we know how to do all of those things, then our customers are going to be happier. We can deliver uh, faster, and this can be also safer, so with higher quality. The content is collaborative, which is really fun. Uh, it's then more accurate, so we have less issues with the content, the same thing as we treat our code, as we can improve and get pull requests from uh, contributors, it's more accurate. We have scale as well, and eventually we have happier developers, which is something that really matters. So let's go into the, uh, the environment, right? So demo time. Uh, so this is um, uh, some of those modules. I, I had some uh, screenshots about those. So you can see we first start with a story. Uh, then we have like a cultural type of modules with leading change, version control, how to do continuous integration, something that is more cultural again between value stream mapping, the DevOps Kaizen, the test-driven development, continuous testing. So this is, this is kind of the modules for the, what we call the first stripe, which is the first uh, uh, environment. And I will go through the module there just to have a quick look. OK, so uh, welcome to this training. I, again, I did not install anything, right? I'm just running on my laptop or using Chrome in that case. Uh, and we set the stage about the training, what this is about, and uh, what you're going to learn. So let's start the scenario. So on the left, I have uh, instructions. Our instructions are important because, well, you want to know 
well, it doesn't going to resize. Um, you want to know how to do things, and uh, and, and and yeah, you have to, to go through the to the system. So let's uh, maybe go to the next step. In fact, uh, I cannot go to the next step because I need to complete the first instruction. So I'm going to prepare just the environment. If Wi-Fi, yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, what this is doing, right? Okay, let me go and go to a presentation mode. There is a, a light color scheme so that you can see a little bit better. Yes. Okay, so what this is doing right now uh, is just stating your environment. Uh, if I go to my own repository, So this is the pet clinic app uh, that was uh, created. Um, so this is you know, the, the sample application that I'm working with. And in the list of issues here, I can see um, a user story that uh, I'm supposed to work on that is coming from Paolo. This has been all provisioned by, by the environment, right? OK, as I was talking, like it takes maybe 15 seconds or so. Uh, the environment has been spun up. So let's go to the next step. Yeah, so now that uh, Jenkins is ready, let's open the Jenkins admin dashboard. Uh, so Jenkins is just actually running here uh, and just is accessible fr from the, uh, the browser. So let's use this uh, login credentials. All right, so I have my own Jenkins right there. Um, again, it's an ephemeral environment that did not exist uh, a minute ago. And I can just go through the overall you know, setups and look at the plugins and look at the job. In fact, the job is there uh, and it's, uh, it's configured and it's ready to be executed. But let's forget a little bit about the technicalities and uh, let's look at how this works. So let's continue there. Um, so I'm working on a user story and this is a module about continuous integration. So as Dan, the developer, uh, you are working on the user story which was prioritized by Paolo, who is the product owner. And Paolo created the story uh, that you can see there. In fact, I already opened it, but uh, this is the story that, uh, that Paolo created. So we don't use Jira for this module, uh, for example, but we just leverage GitHub issues for stories. So the intent of the story is to add new pet names in the database and uh, add more um, uh, uh, support of horses, I think, as a pet clinic because he's fed up with only cats and dogs. So we, for that, we just need to uh, update a file, which is a data sample, and I will show exactly where to update the file. But the intent is that uh, we are going to insert a few lines below uh, this line so that we can see how this goes, right? We are just answering a business need, which is to support horses, horses sorry. So just adding those, and uh, well, uh, sure enough, and if you are a developer, you have seen that, there is a missing parenthesis, but we are not going to fix that. The intent is to continue the learning and, uh, and see why continuous integration is important. So under commit changes, I'm asked to um, add a comment. In fact, I will do that. This copied it to the, uh, to the clipboard. Um, asking to create a temporary branch, never more branch, uh, so that I can create a pull request. All right, and let's get it started. Propose file change, create the pull request. Well, creating the pull request is the next step. Okay, so I'm being teach, but I'm also uh, following a script, but also at the same time, I can get out of the script. So I created this pull request, and this pull request, as you can see there, triggered um, the pipeline. So I can check that pipeline. It's going to open up in another window. And just following the instructions, well, again, go to Jenkins to see the continuous integration happening. And this will take some time to download the dependencies of the pet clinic, build the application to generate the package, run the unit test, and so on and so on. All right, so while uh, Maven is downloading the internet, 
Uh, but, but this is happening, right? So what's happening right now is that uh, there is a build ongoing and uh, it's going through the uh, unit test and definitely things should go wrong because, hey, yeah, build failure, uh, because the tests are failing. And it's going to conclude about that in a few seconds. But that's the intent, right? Is that we can uh, show the mechanics. So we explain the mechanics of doing continuous integration. So GitHub, yeah, notified Jenkins with a code change thanks to the webhook, which we can see. We can see how the webhook is configured. Uh, Jenkins then reads the content of the Jenkins file at the root of the repository so that we can see how uh, you can describe a, a, a pipeline using Jenkins file, et cetera, et cetera. And yes, the build has failed. And uh, now I'm going to have to fix this issue. OK, so let's review the result of the pipeline. Uh, we can see that the error, well, I will have to find the error, but we can see that the error is actually a missing parenthesis. Let's continue. So let's rework the code. We do continuous integration, right? So uh, let's go back to the pull request. Here it is with our failed result because sure enough, uh, the, uh, the, um, the test failed. Go to files changed. Uh, yes, I know there is a missing parenthesis, so let's do that. And it's this all explained in the in the instructions on the uh, in the environment, right? It's really a typo at this time. Okay, so uh, things are being executed again. The continuous integration pipeline will fire. And if you are developing today, and I know a lot of you do that already, but this is actually super important to get right. Uh, you want your pipeline to do a lot of things, uh, do static code analysis, do linting, run your unit tests, uh, run your integration tests, uh, so that you can be really confident that what you do is going to be secure and you're not going to break uh, the others. So at this point, the uh, Jenkins pipeline will be triggered again. It will uh, again compile the code, run, run the automated test, and we can actually see it live in action. Yeah, let's go back. It's still happening there. Yeah, okay, so we passed the build. Uh, we are kept the unit test. We went, We continue through the, uh, the pipeline, and we are even deploying. So uh, what's happening there is that the, um, the pet cleaning application is being deployed in our environment. So there are multiple types, terminal, where I did the setup, the Jenkins environment. Uh, links to the GitHub repository and yeah, the running application that is there. Okay, so uh, we have Tina and we continue to interact with the rest of the team. So when we do continuous integration, how do we interact with the rest of the team? So let's, uh, in the pull request, let's see and let's show how we can get feedback from the other people in the team. Say, hey, Tina, can you please have a look at this? And this is where the um, the okay. This is where the uh, the, the the GitHub app uh, is firing. So this is a kind of a coach that we are running in the uh, DevOps environment. In the sorry, in the uh, in the training environment. Uh, yeah, uh, Tina, you know, answers this. We see this is a, a GitHub app here. Yeah, yeah, th that looks good. So yes, I think we should really replace Jolly Jumper by Silver Blaze. Yeah, right. Let's do that. It's always interesting to implement more changes. So I'm just going to do another change, last one. Where is Jolly Jumper? Here. All right, so again, Continuing the, 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 this notion of explaining how a pull request works, um, how does it get triggered uh, in everything that we do. Let's close some of the windows that we have. Um, and uh, um, 
all, all of this is sequenced. Uh, and uh, I'm a developer, and or, or I'm, I'm maybe a manager that I'm going to that is going to go to or a sales guy that is going to go to a sales engagement, and I'm going to talk about continuous integration. I'd rather experience it beforehand, so that it's really something that I can understand and explain. So uh, the build is about to start, uh, but I think you get the drill on how this is uh, this is all, all all done. At the very end, and it would be nice if it were, was going to be. More than in progress, but yeah, we are there. Okay. So at the end of it, yeah, uh, this is happening. Let's maybe go back to Blue Ocean. At the end, uh, everything will be uh, fine, and what I'm going to do is just ask Tina to review one last time and uh, find out if she's happy with the change. And it looks like an eternity when you are demoing those things, but when you do it for real, it's not that bad. Okay. So many logs. Yeah, success. Okay, so everything is good. We can see that the build is good. Uh, the pull request looks good, so let's ask. Tina for a feedback. <clears throat> yeah, looks good. So the last step is to merge this pull request so that this can make it to master. Okay. So this was a demo with a working Wi Fi. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. So about learning and, 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 and all of those things, I think I showed you the, the multiple concepts. Here, what we have done is uh, uh, create trainings uh, in a way that are, I mean, the trainings are on following the DevOps principles as well. Uh, we do continuous integration for our training material. We do version control and all of this fun stuff. We do automated tests. So even learning can be disrupted by software. So if you are a software developer, you have great powers. All right, thank you. Any question? Yeah. What would be a good way to adopt anything like this for my organization? So the question is, what would be a good way to adopt anything like this in my organization? Um, so I think um, you, you may want to have a platform, right? Uh, to, to actually really be able to do something like that. So Katakoda, the one that we use, is really good. Uh, there are many other things that I believe you can do as well and alternatives. Um, but I think, like, if you have to share concept, whether even if it's a presentation or if it's like, okay, training, but if it's a presentation, presenting a product, having the story, I believe is really important. Even you can make fun with the personas and the characters. Having real examples and showing that you know what you are talking about <laughs> really is important. Um, and uh, you know what? We got we when we put this together, we got really inspired by the rest of the DevOps community. Again, as I said, this was coming from Target, which are doing a really awesome job with their DevOps dojos. Um, we are really looking to be able to share this material with the rest of the community. So, um, yeah. Stay tuned. Any more questions? Nope. Thank you very much. Safe trip back. <laughs>